What's going on, everybody? You are tuned in to the Friday night episode of the Hill Shadows podcast. Thank you for joining us. My name is Jeremiah. As always, with me tonight is Ashley. Would you like to say hi to everybody? Hey. Hope everybody's doing all right this weekend. Got a lot of cool stuff to share with you guys, and uh, sorry we're still uh, we're still down video, but we uh, we have made some progress, and we plan on plan on getting the. Uh, now I'm picking up too far on the right side, but anyway, yeah, we plan on getting there. Well, you think next week we'll be we'll be there? Well, I hope. I said that last week. We we but tend to say it every week, and it never I'm happens. Uh, we're we're closer to getting there now than we were last week. I'll say that. And um, I feel like by next week we we we'll go ahead and uh we'll go ahead and shoot video anyway. I mean, it wouldn't be much more than just putting the camera on a tripod, really. Until we can get a spot for it. But we got some cool stuff we want to talk about tonight. Uh, and I also want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button if you're a fan of the strange, the supernatural, the paranormal. That's the kind of content we cover here. And um, I want to thank you to the people that hit the subscribe button this past week. We had a couple of comments and uh, and actually I was a uh, a little bit enlightened as far as one of the topics go because I did not know uh, I guess I might have heard it at some point but these things we've been talking about for the past couple weeks mm-hmm. are known as crawlers which I didn't know somebody commented on a on our video last week and informed me that these things are, are in fact known as crawlers so I've uh, I've dug in a little deeper and done some some research and I guess they're known as pell crawlers p a l e crawlers and they do uh, seem to be kind of like the uh, the rake in a sense like That's it's what uh, I envision anyways when right, I hear stories uh, about them Yeah the stories we've covered the past couple of weeks it definitely sounds like a uh, a rake like creature and I know a lot of people are quick to dismiss the whole rake thing because it came from what like a creepy pasta or something is that where it originated I believe so but that and the fact that there happens to be these other things that fit the description you know that's uh I feel like it's just a coincidence probably and you know just because somebody made up something called a rake doesn't mean that there's not something already out there that exists that fits the description right sure. so anyway I've done a little research on crawlers and um I looked a little uh, a little bit all over the web and as usual I find the bulk of my information on reddit now there's just a lot of great stuff on reddit and um especially when it comes to this type of uh, content the like paranormal cryptids, that type of thing. But hopefully I can shed a little light on them, and I don't know how reliable this information is in front of me, but, you know, we can only, uh, we can only listen to other people's accounts and try to piece things together down the road. And you have some stuff you want to go over tonight, right? About moon-eyed people, correct? I... Did a little bit of research. There's not a lot about them. Not honestly. a lot I about just moon-eyed still people. Still think it's a. But it's a fascinating topic. It is. It's to something me. we haven't covered uh, before tonight, and just get comfortable and uh, come hang out with us for our 16th episode. This is the 16th one. It means we've been doing this for four months straight. Uh, I think we probably missed a couple here and there, but you know, that's a. Uh, that's a long stretch we've been doing it so we've covered a lot of information and we're uh we did actually shoot some video we're going to share with you guys too on a separate video we uh we went to the uh kentucky river a couple days ago where we originally filmed the uh the tree structure we had and who knows what made it but it's a pretty interesting tree structure and it's a remote little location and I'll definitely get that uploaded, but 
let's talk about these crawlers. So I got this from a Reddit post um, under the heading "Dealing with Pell Crawlers, Wendigos, Skinwalkers," and um, I will uh, link this in the description of the video too if you guys want to check it out. But um, it's posted by the user Archangel four 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 four. So this was posted six months ago. If the following doesn't fit into your worldview, fine. Just don't bother telling me not to post about it. If it serves you good, if not, so be it. Just be aware of the swarm of naysayers that will come to make you look the other way and ignore this. I have certainly embarrassed myself in previous posts because of this. Well, so be it. If I unjustly argue with you, sorry, I do commit mistakes. If you think I'm an idiot, fine. As long as you it, as long as you get to at least consider my point. I don't care what you think of me. There is a lot of noise around this kind of topic and people try to censor it. Confusion is sometimes inevitable. Anyway, this is meant for those looking for help. These creatures are being seen more often with each passing day as their numbers increase worldwide. Now who knows how fast their numbers are increasing, but I'll go on. A pell crawler also called a rake, wendigo, skinwalker, or whatever favorite name you have for these creatures. I think these are all different, but... Was once a human that was possessed by a demonic entity and then transformed by it by the means of black magic or biotechnology. They are... Let's see. They are man-eating, incarnated, demonic creatures beyond redemption now. As one or more demons take full control of their new host, they make the body abnormally grow and mutate into the typical crawler shape. A lanky, hairless, skinny, pale gray or white humanoid with very long limbs, very pointed clawed fingers and toes, sharp teeth and sunken eyes. A being that can bend its limbs in unnatural ways to walk on all fours very quickly as well as walk in an upright posture often hunched, newly mutated crawlers will tend to crawl more, but as they get stronger, they will adopt to erect posture more often. Their eyes can often glow in varying colors. Other times, they are just deep black. When stalked by a crawler, pray and rebuke it away in the name of Jesus Christ and God. They are demons and can only really physically attack you if you are afraid of them or give permission to them. Have faith. Materialism will fail. Well, I don't. I can't read that. Part. I can't fail see you. Where? Materialism will fail you against them. They are no mere cryptids. This is happening with many people around the world. They like to play mind games before they get you afraid enough to be their meal. That's how they get permission for killing a person. Get everybody to pray while leaving the place quickly. Don't follow their noises. Don't open doors or windows when they tap it. Don't communicate with them in any way. Don't let them trick you into following their will. Don't let them gain control over you. Get close to them. Don't give them permission to get close to you. Don't seek to see them again. The only acceptable interaction with their kind is to either to rebuke them or to kill them. We are nothing but food to them. They grapple people and eat them alive by the abdomen until the heart stops beating. That's the only food source they really eat, living people. If you see one and have not the faith to rebuke it, nor the means and will to kill it, flee the place immediately. It says, headshots will kill it, but it's like shooting a tiger. You better get it before it gets you. You will want skull penetration and multiple skull. shots. Skull, right. Shotgun and buckshot is a good option. Aim for the head, but be be aware that you will probably be trembling and they move quickly. Be sure of what you are doing and don't go alone. Have a knife, pointy, machete, or a tomahawk as a side weapon. And their presence is perceived by total silence in the woods. No birds or insect noises. Animals and pets become very scared in their presence and often flee from a uh, place during an encounter. Their smell is also a sign of their present. Crawlers stink putrid, as do many demons. 
They live in heavy shade and are more active at night. They can make hideouts made of messy, piled, interlaced, dried, thin sticks and branches. They hide in shadows or dark places during day to avoid sunlight. Any kind of dark place will do. You know that creepy place in town no one likes to be around at night, the eerie park or that haunted old building. That's the kind of place. They like to shelter in places where evil actually takes or took place. Ritual sites, burial grounds, places of death and vices. But direct sunlight quickly burns their pale skin badly, giving it a rosy tone. They avoid the sun as much as possible, but can venture in it for very brief periods if they have good opportunity of a meal. They may go out in the open and overcast, only in overcast days though. They can access people's memories and mimic known voices to try to lure people for an ambush. The mimicry sound has a kind of weird synthesized feel to it sometimes. They typically mimic sounds of women or children in distress to lure people away from the trail into their killing grounds where they can feed undisturbed. They usually avoid big groups of people and prefer to attack lone women, children, or disabled people. They are also drawn to the smell of fresh human blood. If you are a female and think there might be one around, take extra care during periods. They can track the scent from a long distance. Some can camouflage, changing colors, forming patterns in their skin like an octopus, or just becoming almost invisible like in the Predator movie. So it's like a, a, a cloaking mechanism. Some have the distressing habit of hiding their facial features, like not showing a mouth, making their appearance even more grotesque. They can easily get to high places jumping and climbing, like over rooftops or trees. A few older ones can phase in and out of the physical plane, moving across walls into closed places like cellars and attics. They often follow people after sightings, and try to manipulate them into fear or into getting into vulnerable situations where they can attack. Their eyes have hypnotic powers. They can suggest feelings and thoughts to their victims through psychic attacks and attempt to manipulate their behavior. A sudden sense of dread is a typical form of this kind of attack. They often cause nightmares to their potential victims. They can also make the potential victim obsessed into seeing them again or returning to the place of the sighting creating an opportunity for an attack. Some are more vulnerable to these attacks than others. Being engaged in vices and sin does make one uh, more open to their attacks in general. They can attach to people's souls and keep parasiting them for a long period of time until they are rebuked by prayer. In conclusion, they are very dangerous spiritual predators. Don't be a fool and go looking after to go looking after them in abandoned buildings, sewer entrances, woods, caves, etc. Unless you are serious about hunting them. Let's be honest, this is a bad idea, even for more mundane predators. What do you think you're going to achieve? So it's a, some interesting stuff, very interesting information on them, right? How does this man know That's this? That's what I'm saying, but I mean... Or woman, I, I will say, I, I did read one thing that stood out to me during that. And I'll, I'll, I'll say another thing about it, too. Um, the skin, as far as being kind of like an octopus skin, mm -hmm. it sounds like it would have skin. that kind of quality, right? I mean, there's a a whole lot of stuff attached to this. What, is it, are these his resources? I guess that would be resources or where he has gathered his information, right? right? So, um, if you guys want to click that link, I don't want to take up too much of your time right here but you know he said something about what is um was it maybe something about like they could get burnt and have like a rosy color mm -hmm. that was also a an interesting detail yeah it made me think about when i was a kid and something came to my window like, i was only like eight or nine i'm sure i've told you about this right and the thing was like red looking in color like Hmm. And it waved at me, and I got up to look closer because I thought it was a friend. And when I got close, like, to the window to open it and see who it was, like, it jumped down and took off running. Interesting. 
I also, that made me think of that. I don't know. I, don't know I also why. have one other little, it's not really long, but it's a little more possible information on these things that mm -hmm. I want to I read. And I'll also put the link to this. It says tall, so the thing that I saw was not tall. Well, Anyways, if they well. get tall, they got to start out small, though. This is under a post called Crawler Sightings, and uh, the title of this is All the Info I Know About Pell Crawlers. I have it copied. So this is somebody's information they've collected and just wrote, wrote everything they got down. It's not a whole lot, but uh, I'm going to get into it here. I'll have the link in the description if you guys want to check this out. The Pell Crawler is a tall, pale humanoid creature that stands 5 to 9 feet tall. They are very skinny, pale, slender. Witnesses say that their skin is very tight like leather with no pigmentation. Maybe a little pinkish or gray, but mostly totally white and kind of smooth. You can even see their bones, and it's so pale that it reflects moonlight. Their forearms are longer than their upper arms. They have long, human-like legs and probably live in cave systems or storm drains. They have long, thin fingers and claws. Their facial traits are still pretty unknown, but reports say they have big black eyes or small, very sunken eyes. They have almost no mouth, but when they open it, it resembles a grin filled with needle-like teeth. They have two slits for a nose and mostly no hair. They make a variety of sounds from loud, clicking, very deep, rashed throat groans and burps, humanish screaming to screeching, repeating words, to squealing that sounds like clicking when slowed down, possibly echolocation. They run fast as hell and pretty quickly. They can walk on two, but seem to prefer walking and sprinting on all fours, like a dog or a ape or cheetah. Hmm. But they always have something weird about their lanky movement. Reports say that their joints crackle and yeah. seem rotated when they move, like a very sick dog. They have a bizarre attraction to tobacco smoke or loose tobacco. People report seeing them while smoking a cigarette at night on a porch. They come out at night, but very rarely can be seen in the daytime, and can be seen in any month of the year. Native Americans call them Gugots, that's G-H-U-G-O-T-S, and they say they can only cause mental distress and come from the realm of dreams. They turn into tree branches at day, and at night, the natives gave them tobacco leaves for, the, for them to manifest or something. They are sightings mostly from U.S., and they got a list of states, uh, Ohio, Illinois, Wisconsin, New York, Detroit, Florida, Utah, Texas, Massachusetts, and also Canada, Poland, Indonesia, Australia, and a lot of sightings from Russia. All of the information makes up for a possible commonly seen cryptid. They are seen locally and are as dangerous as a very observative animal that seems to scare and follow you and want to hurt you. If you don't act dangerous or suspicious, there are almost no reported attacks. The only attacks were on poultry. They seem to eat rotten corpses or roadkill of almost any animal. They seem to be scary or very suspicious, maybe even supernatural. The first signs of a crawler sighting is the feeling of dread or being stalked or watched. Weird sounds and very fast running all around you, but never to be seen. When these moments happen, there is a very strange silence, like the forest knows something is not right. The Gugats theory explains that super, explains their supernatural traits and why people see tall, skinny creatures at night in a dream or as an hallucination when they were children. Pretty freaky. All you have to remember is that they may stalk you and will observe, but will not attack if you don't act suspicious. If you run away, they will start chasing you. So treat them as a very observative and curious, but still freaky and a little violent, big wild animal. Huh. So there you have it. I've uh, obtained some information on these cryptids. And um, if you guys have any further information or may know some more about these things, please do comment and let us know. Because a lot of times, you know, we learn from each other as we are researching these things. So... 
Yeah, well, it's not. I'd heard the term crawler before. I think, I think, uh, I think I was thinking about like the Fresno, Fresno crawler. Night crawlers, right? yeah. Those are quite interesting too. They're very interesting. I would like to uh, cover those one night as well. You know, there are actually some, um, well, like petroglyphs mm-hmm. that resemble those type beings. Yeah, the uh, the Fresno crawlers are. Uh, I believe they're probably a little more leaning toward the alien side you of think things. So? Well, if you believe what a lot of people say about them, some people say that uh, they think that they are the insect, the insectus, the insectoid, or whatever. Yeah. The uh, and um, if that's the case, then they uh, they are very indifferent toward human beings. You know, we're kind of yeah. like science experiments to them or whatever. Hmm. But yeah, that's um, a lot of these. You know, it has the uh, the same thing with like a Bigfoot encounter, or like any other kind of paranormal encounter. Almost like everything gets quiet. You get the uh, right. the very uneasy feeling, mm-hmm. like something's wrong. The smell. The smell is very sulfurous, like a sulfur type smell. Yeah. So yeah, um, I don't know a lot about crawlers. I've, I guess we're probably uh. The one thing I I read in this last one that that stood out to me is like um, hearing stuff running around you very fast. I I thought about because I've been you had that I've had that happen uh-huh. to me a few times and you like turn the light or whatever you don't see anything but yeah I don't know I don't, I've never seen one I don't think I want to see one. No. They sound absolutely. I hope hideous. that's not what I saw. I don't know what I saw as a little kid. But anyway, let us know your guys' encounters. If you guys have any information you want us to share, or you maybe you guys have your own encounter you'd want us to share, you can contact us via email, and that's hillshadowsky at yahoo.com, and we'll gladly share your information. Or if you guys just want to say hi, you can just send us a little hello message or whatever. We'll, we'll gladly uh, reply to you. And Ashley has a... Uh, a story about moon eyed people. I don't have a story about moon eyed people. It's a story about moon eyed people. It's not a story. If you have information about moon eyed people. I had never heard of moon eyed people before right, until like, yeah, I was reading a, a thread the other day and I just found it to be interesting. Um, but the moon eyed people are basically a legendary group of short, bearded, white skinned people who were said to have lived in Appalachia until the Cherokee expelled them. Stories about them attributed to Cherokee tradition are mentioned by early European settlers in America. Um, In a 1797 book, Benjamin Smith Barton explains they are called moon-eyed because they saw poorly during the day. Some stories claim they created the area's pre... Wait, I'm sorry. Some stories claim... They created the area's pre-Columbian ruins. Oh, they created the... Okay, I see. I'm sorry. I don't Mm -hmm. know why I was reading that completely. I don't know. I was hearing it weird. And they disappeared from the area. Barton cited as his source of conversation with Colonel Leonard Marbury um, in early settler of Georgia. Marbury, a Revolutionary War officer and a congressman in the second... Provincial Congress of Georgia. Provincial. How do you say that? Um, let's see. Second. Provincial. Pro- provincial. Yeah, sorry. I don't <laughs> Acted as intermediary between Native American Indians and then the state of Georgia and the United States government. So, evidently, the Natives drove the moon eyed people out by or, or drove them away or like underground or into caves or maybe that's just where they dwelled before anyways um so they allegedly the creek indians in georgia allegedly attacked the moon eyes on a night when the full moon was so bright that it was nearly daylight 
leaving the pearl-eyed ones defenseless and driving them away. Possibly into Tennessee. And people don't really know if, like, they still walk among us or not. So this is in the Appalachian mm -hmm. region, it is. right? Anyways, when hearing about them, it made me think about those little brick houses that your dad has told us about in eastern Kentucky. Mm hmm Wonder if, um, you know. If they belong to me. Yeah, did they inhabit those little structures? I mean, it's possible. So there are a few published accounts about the Moon-Eyed people, uh, one was a book by a William Mooney uh -huh. in 1902. Um, there was a human interest story in the Chattanooga News in 1923 and that mentioned the legend of Moon Eye people. Yeah. Uh, the Georgia Parks Division of the Department of Natural Resources has a marker at Fort Mountain that mentions legends about the wall's origin. Of the Moon-Eyed people, the plaque says these people are said to have been unable to see during certain phases of the moon. Oh. During one of these phases, the Creek people annihilated the race. Some believe the Moon-Eyed people built the fortifications on this mountain. Mm -hmm. It says today there are differing published opinions about the Moon-Eyed people as to whether they were real people of prehistoric times or mythical people from folklore. Whether moon-eyed means they had eyes like moons or were called moon-eyed because they could see better at night. Whether they are indigenous peoples or of European origin. So yeah, it's very limited information on these things. Hmm. I thought it was pretty fascinating that I had never heard of these things. I couldn't find much about them though. I just think it's inter interesting. I mean, they did them kind of dirty, though. Yeah. Yeah, attack them while they was blind. It didn't, they didn't seem like they were bad people or anything. Right, right? I'm not hearing anything bad about I them. I didn't hear anything bad at all. They just attacked them. I don't know. That's weird. What was the uh, story you had mentioned to me? About what? It sounded like a, one of them crawly things. What was that called? Huh? It was like a, you know, like a... Monster of something. Or oh, whatever. that what was, was just that? like a list of like 32 different um, cryptids of some sort. I don't know. But anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, I can't remember where I found that at now. Um, hold on a minute. There's, I'm trying to. Trying to find another thing about oh maybe it's this the little people like there was supposed to be like some little um graves or something found. Let me see if I can find this. Uh hairy faced dwarfs. Now, there's also the ancient Moon-Eyed people of North Carolina, which is a yeah, statue, yeah. right? Yeah, that's where they originally were at. In Murphy, North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, and some believe they were pushed away towards Tennessee. So you said they were like three feet high, is that right? Yeah. The only thing you can really find about them are the little statue things that were carved out of them. Like their little flat faces. They're pretty interesting. I'll put some. Uh, and round bodies. I'll definitely paste them or add some uh, pictures to the video here for you guys to see. Let me read to you about these little people, okay? Which I think this is quite interesting too because it says they build houses in the rock structures under mm -hmm. trees, which that's like fairy sounding. But this was um, on. It was called The Little People, Mystical Dwarfs of the Mountain by, oh geez, I don't even know how to say this. Well, it's on um, <coughs> eaglesrestpark.org, Folklore of the Land, the folklore and legends of many Native American tribes and indigenous people from other countries include the stories of the little people. The little people live in the woods and are often thought to be hairy-faced dwarfs. 
Some are no higher than your knee, others are smaller. They build houses in the rock structures under trees, along streams, and sometimes in the trees. They hide from anyone coming into the forest. In the legends of the old centuries, count, countries, I'm sorry, they are called fairies, brownies, gnomes, goblins, leprechauns, and pixies, to name just a few. Each Native American tribe has their own name for them. Um, it says, do these little people exist? There is little evidence that they do exist. In the 1830s, in Ohio, a graveyard was unearthed, which contained the skeletons belonging to a pygmy race. The graves in the cemetery were just three feet long. Author Mary Joyce wrote a book called Cherokee Little People Were Real. In her book, she states she has proof of their existence. Her book presents some of the information uncovered during the construction of the campus of Western Carolina University in the 1930s. Joyce's interest in the Cherokee Little People began when she interviewed the late Walter Middleton. In that interview, Middleton told her about finding little tunnels cut in the clay soil when they started the foundations for the buildings. Middleton described the tunnels as being arched and a few feet high. The workers at the construction site also found small bones and a small skull which had wisdom teeth indicating an older person. Also found on the campus property were what was believed to be two Indian mounds. However, the old timers there said they were piles of dirt from digging the tunnels. Cindy Thorington Haggerty of Indian Heritage says the little people are classified into three groups. The dogwood people, the laurel people, and the rock people, she said. The dogwood people are kind and always doing good things for people. The laurel people are the ones always playing tricks and are mischievous. And the rock people are mean and should be avoided. Lula Owl, Cherokee elder, told us about growing up on the Kuala boundary of the eastern band of the Cherokee Indians in Cherokee, North Carolina. She said when she and her mother would go into the forest to gather chestnuts, berries, and greens, her mother would always caution her to watch for the little people because the mean ones might do something bad to them. Lula said, I never seen no little people, but she minded her mother and kept a keen eye as she gathered in the forest. Fellow researcher Lamar Marshall was hiking some Cherokee trails in the forest one day using his handheld GPS. He said all of a sudden he felt like he was tripped, and down he went into a small creek. When he got up, he searched diligently for his GPS, and he never found it. He said the little people took it. Some tribes believe that in order to keep the little people happy, one should leave a gift for the little people before entering the forest. Jerry Wolf, elder of the Eastern Band of the Cherokees, told us it was important to sprinkle tobacco on the ground before entering the forest as payment to enter. Legend says that the little people like music and especially drumming, singing, and dancing. The Cherokee legend says sometimes their drums are heard in lonely places in the mountains, but it's not safe to follow it for they do not like to be disturbed at home. They'll throw a spell over the stranger so that he is bewildered and loses his way. And even if he finally gets back to the settlement, he will be like one dazed forever after. The legend goes on to say, if you find something in the forest, such as a knife or trinket, you must ask the little people if you can have it. If you don't, they may throw stones at you on your way home. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. But on top of the mountain, in Ogle, on Oglethorpe Mountain, is Eagle's Rest Park. And it has many rock structures and small places where the little people may live. It also reminds me of the puck wedgie, right? Yeah. There's like nothing on here about puck wedgies, but but this little amount, which is pretty much sounds like they could be the same thing. It says puck wedgies can appear and disappear at will, shape shift. Um, of which the most common form is a creature that looks like a porcupine from the back and a half troll, half human from the front, and walks upright. Lure people to their deaths, use magic, launch poison arrows, and create fire. Native Americans believe that puck wudgies were once friendly to humans, but then turned against them and are best left alone. According to lore, a person who annoyed a puck wudgie would be subject to nasty tricks by it or subject to being followed by the puck wudgie, who would cause trouble for them. 
They are known to kidnap people, push them off cliffs, attack their victims with short knives and spears, and to use sand to blind their victims. They are said to be the enemies of culture heroes Ma Shop and Granny Squanit. One story from Wampanoag folklore explains that they began causing mischief and tormenting the natives out of jealousy of the devotion and affection the natives had for Ma Shop, who eventually exiled them to different parts of North America. The Pukwudgies have since been hostile to humans and took revenge by killing Ma Shop's five sons. Some e variations even suggest that they kill Ma Shop himself. Huh. So yeah, these these could definitely be the same um, little people for sure. I mean, I think there's always some truth to a folklore. Right, yeah, absolutely. I don't know, maybe some of it's a bit out there, but I do think most of it originates for some, from some kind of truth. I wonder how often that people um, people interact with these um, little people and think they're interacting with Sasquatch or something, right? Because mm. I hear gifting, leaving tobacco right. for them. And I mean, oh. the thing about something being only three foot tall is it's definitely going to have a lot, much easier time hiding than mm -hmm. something being, you know, eight to ten foot tall. That definitely, yeah. uh, definitely adds some, some, uh, mystery to the whole thing. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, it's, um, interesting stuff. I've, I've seen some, um, you know, it's just so hard to tell if you've seen anything that's only that tall, right? Because... Because it could have been, like, if you see something, it could have been something small, like a, a possum or a, a raccoon right. or something. Like, it would it'd just be easy to to get away with hiding if you were only yeah. so big, right? Yeah. Because well, you're, already, you're already looking for stuff that size when you're out hiking. But are you? Well, I, yeah, I am. Like, you know, dog, dog oh, size. Yeah. 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 Maybe they, like, blend in like the hobbit people and the <laughs> well yeah they would have to absolutely and if you guys haven't watched the new uh lord of the rings you've got to <laughs> check out the first episode just to see how the hobbits like hide and stuff it's it's Quite actually fascinating really me. amazing what they i mean that's what i imagine all the fairies and it really makes it know, eye opening to what to, to what you could get by with by just uh utilizing the force the floor, earth, right? Yeah. yeah. Just using the the stuff that's already there anyway is camouflage. It's just <laughs> very it's really uh, impressive. It's a really good show. I'm I'm kinda biased about that. I've, I've always been into Lord of the Rings, but Yeah, I highly recommend that. It's uh it's got some cool stuff. And also I wanna thank you guys for uh for hanging out with us tonight. Um Hopefully by next week we will have the video going. And uh, it's not that we don't have a way to record the video. It's more of a we don't have a place to shoot the video and uh, and look exactly how we want it to look right now. I guess would be mm -hmm. the issue. But uh, we're working on it. And um, <clears throat> by next week we should we should have some progress coming along. I feel like we could at least. We'll at least have some videos uploaded by next mm -hmm. week, for sure. And with the weather getting cooler, we'll be going out and, um, and shooting some more videos outdoors, too. It's been so hot in Kentucky. It's, it's just gotten so humid. So it's either been raining nonstop or it's just been so crazy hot and humid it's outside. Great, it's actually. just... It hasn't been... The, the weather's just been too hot to even think about it. And not to mention... We've had so many ticks this year, like, you really couldn't go out hiking around too much without without having to deal with those on a uh, severe level. Right. No thank you, that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I've just been kind of pushing, waiting for fall to roll around so I can get out and, um, and not have to worry about the snakes, the ticks, all that, all the fun stuff, right? Yep. That's all the things that make, make it interesting. But thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking out 
our 16th episode. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like us to maybe cover in one of our future episodes, please leave it in the comments or any ideas at all. If you guys, like I said, if you got a story you want to share with us or want us to share, you can you can get in contact with us via email. That's hillshadowsky at yahoo.com. And please make sure you're subscribed. Uh, we don't want you to miss any of the old podcasts we've got. We try to cover everything. I try to uh, try to make a little a database of sorts out of our episodes if we can. Yeah. And you know we're all always researching and always learning. And um, we hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. And um, we'll go ahead and get out of here. I don't think I have anything else for tonight. Do you have anything else? I don't think so. I know I'm tired. I haven't been sleeping real good through the week. Getting up at 6 a.m. is really doing a number on me. But yeah, that's all for tonight, guys. So you guys have a safe week.